<laughs> well, you know, thank you so much for joining me today. You know, uh, we've met quite a few times over the years, usually by accident at ISC West, but it, it's always been a real pleasure. I remember the first time I met you, I went over the Brevo booth, and uh, I was very surprised when I found out you weren't an engineer at the end of your demo. I have to say, I still remember to this day, that was a really good demo for someone who's not on the uh, the more technical side of the house. That is very that is very kind. Uh, the feeling is quite mutual. It's been great running uh, running into you over over the years in various capacities, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me and for the kind words for sure. So, so why don't you tell me a little bit about what you uh, do for Brevo and, and Brevo's background? Yeah, absolutely. So, at Brevo, we consider ourselves to be the leaders in worldwide cloud based or the worldwide leaders rather, excuse me, in cloud based access control. Uh, so we've been doing this for about 20 years. Our CEO is still with us today. He's one of four founders of the company, and he is just as passionate today about deploying physical security and access control in the cloud for a variety of reasons that I know we'll we'll talk about here on the session today, of course, um, as he was then. So that's that's Brevo's focus is making uh, you know making spaces safer and more efficient, um, and and having the access control be used for far more than just security because of the ability to deploy in the cloud. Um, and that, that's what we do. I've been with the company about eight years. I am, I've had a number of different roles helping with our global growth and our uh, dealing with enterprise end users. Now my focus, I'm the senior director of global partnerships for the company. So I work on partnerships like this one that we, that we have here with Sherry, uh, where we have uh, other applications connect with our application and develop a, a joint value proposition together. So that's what I do at the company. Yeah, I didn't know Brevo actually had four co-founders. So uh, Sherry also had four co-founders. Great. You know, Sherry, we're a cloud-based platform to allow for enhanced tenant and enterprise engagement. And we, I think we complement each other really well because we both want to be cloud first. And we're both about adding enhancements on to each other's systems. I mean, we're not, Sherry's not an access control platform. The main goal for Sherry is to take existing access control platforms and add on features that may be a little bit more focused on, you know, how people are looking at the space in terms of they want to have a certain marketing feel to it, right? We've talked about before, like what value does Sherry bring to, to Brevo? And our white labeling was one that always sticks out in my mind. Because when you think of the time and energy that people put into, you know, marketing their buildings on these new high rides, it's substantial. And it's great to have, you know, an access control system that's working well in the background. But I think something where we complement each other is, you know, we take that front and we really add some, uh, some spice to it. I'll, I'll tell you about a recent site. And uh, you'll be seeing the images probably over the next couple of days when we actually promote it more more openly. But their their mobile credential, they actually went to an artist, like a, a local streetwear artist who was associated with an NBA team, and had him design their their mobile credential. That's so, great. like, the mobile credential really, like, fits with the building, you know, the app fits with the building, everything about how they're experiencing that building in terms of that app, which, once again, the app is not the app control system, but everything about how they're experiencing that building through the app is very unique and very customized to that space. So, you know, it's really great that we get to add on and, and complement the system so nicely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, That's, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I look forward to seeing more, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, Jonathan, to talk about the cloud particularly, because, I mean, you touched on it briefly, but Brevo is, to my knowledge, one of the first, if, if not the first, who is really doing physical security consistently and cloud first. Is that kind of a correct statement? Yeah. Absolutely. We were, we were, you know, we take pride in the fact, or certainly our CEO takes pride in the fact that we were doing this before the cloud was called the cloud and before the cloud and IT sort of became synonymous as they are becoming in most cases today. And certainly before the cloud was connected, um, you know, to, to physical security. So we've been doing this for a long time. And, and certainly, again, I keep referring to him, but our CEO is, is very passionate about that. So we, we take pride in having done this for a long time and having been the, the pioneers in, in doing this. We have a lot of, yeah, you know, there's a lot of, of competitors and other companies um, doing this now, which is great. You know, we just believe that that's a, a validation for, um, you know, for the work that we started doing and, and pioneered in. And uh, that's that's where we are. So. Definitely. I mean, you know, it, it, it's all I hear about now when I go to conferences is, is they're talking about cloud. They're talking about, you know, traditional legacy on-premises platforms moving to the cloud. And then you're probably over there in the corner and you're like, we, we, we've got this. Like, we've been doing this for a very, very long time. I mean, it, you know, Stephen Van Zell did uh, a podcast or a, a, an event on IPO Edge that I listened to maybe a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And he was talking about doing it back in the early 2000s and, and how no one had any idea like of how to even explain what the cloud was. I think he even said that, and I apologize if I'm getting strong, but even compared it to like mainframes, because people are more familiar with mainframes 
back in the early 2000s than they are with what the cloud is. I mean, that tells you, you know, how early Brevo got into the game and in terms of being a leader in the cloud space. I mean, I, my dad, who is very much retired, tells me about doing mainframe movies in college in the 60s. So, I mean, you are truly in the early 20s, 2000s, closer to the 80s than you are at the present day. I mean, it, it really is quite something. No, that that is true. And I think he saw, you know, he, I guess, you know, saw the benefits of that. And, and you know, it means a lot to us to be a cloud based company. I mean, we just believe there's there's so much more. There's so much to be offered just in terms of efficiency, you know, not having to deal with a lot of the infrastructure and the needs that you have to that you have to deal with with an on premise server. Um, just the the ability to the reliability of the cloud, you know, the ability to scale cybersecurity. I mean, there's so many things um, that we'll get into, but it really does, you know, mean a lot to us um, to do that, to offer that to our clients. I mean, we have uh, 25 million, over 25 million credentialed users around the world. Somebody who has a credential to, to get in, whether it be a mobile credential or a, or a FOB-based credential. Um, and we're deployed, you know, we have tens of thousands of customers across industries. And, and we believe that with every customer we deploy to, we're just making things more efficient, more reliable, more cyber secure for them. And, and just, you um, you know, really, really offering this in a, in a better way, we feel. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about the high level benefits of cloud right now, but one of the things that really kind of set the tone when you and I were talking about what we wanted to speak about specifically in the webinar is that McKinsey report. So I'll put it in the chat right now in case anyone wants to look at it later, but you know, number one, thank you for sharing that with me. It really was um, enlightening and, and kind of validated a lot of the thoughts that I had about cloud, but I mean, we'll get into it more, but certainly there's some things in there that surprised me a little bit as well in, in terms of, you know, just how large the cloud market is. I mean, we're not talking just physical security at this point, but it talks about the total market for cloud being $1 trillion. I mean, it really is unbelievable. I mean, it, there's a comparison in there. I think the total IT market value was $230 million, give or take, and to talk about cloud being $1 trillion. I mean, so you and I having conversations about the cloud, both of our companies are investing heavily in cloud. I mean, you're for an extremely long time, but both of us are investing in the cloud because there's a clear market growth that is going to happen and a focus that's going to continue to happen through cloud. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And I thought the article was very interesting. I mean, the article wasn't referring to specific or excuse me, to security specifically, but a lot of, as I think we'll talk about today, but a lot of yeah. the things we, we found in there um, are are just so relevant. I mean, and they just they just really transfer over very well. So I, I agree. It's um, it's critically important for so many reasons: cyber and you know scale, and and, and particularly you know with the with the return to work as that continues to evolve. Um, but the ability to be flexible in, in how you you know secure buildings and allow people to manage facilities, I think it's it's absolutely critical. And the scale cannot be cannot be underestimated. I, I certainly think COVID has has accelerated this transition, at least in, in terms of our line of work, our collective yeah. line of work for sure. So. Well, I mean, this is a good lead into kind of my first question that I'll, I'll pose to you, because you're talking about return to work and return to work is something that has a lot of visibility to high level leadership within a company. Yeah. You know, when your experience and what have you seen, have you seen that, you know, board of directors are being engaged on cloud solutions broadly, not even just physical security? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, certainly in our in our work, you know, as we engage with people, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I mean, I'll refer back to the article again. I mean, what they said there is that 67 percent mm-hmm. of publicly owned boards are actually not engaged in the cloud, which, you know, when you and I were talking about this briefly and what when I see that, we just view this as such an enormous opportunity because just because they're not engaged now doesn't mean that they never will. And we've just been saying this. I mean, again, Steve, who, you know, we keep referring back to, you know, to him, certainly at the beginning of this and said, it's only a matter of time. And that was 20 years ago. Well, now we're certainly at the point where it's only a matter of time, but it's much more immediate now. I mean, you know, if you got two thirds of people not even dealing with this issue, they're absolutely going to have to, um, you know, just in terms of me, you just see, I mean, we hear, you know, just here, I, I live in Washington, just, you know, governments, government agencies that are going to the cloud, you know, because it's a more secure and efficient way to store their data. One example I like to use when we talk about Brevo and cybersecurity in the cloud, the CIA, a number of years ago with Amazon Web Services signed a $600 million contract to secure their data in the cloud. That's obviously very, you know, high, uh, you know, the highest uh, level of- uh, That's a great, I'd like to sell that contract. That sounds great. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, exactly. But that's the highest level of, of you know, security that there is. And if, and if that's going to the cloud, there's clearly a good reason to that. So just, you know, you have two thirds that aren't engaged in it yet. What an opportunity for us collectively, you know, in partnership and others in our industry to go um, and to engage that because it's absolutely it's absolutely coming for, for so many reasons. No, I mean, and it's a good example you bring up with the CIA because, you know, it's easy to say, like, well, the cloud is such a specific IT task. Does that really fall under the purview of the board of directors? And, and I think we both agree that the answer is yes. I mean, there, there are so many different aspects. You're, you're talking about the long-term strategy of a company and how it's going to grow, how it needs to be flexible. We see cloud as a solution to that. You see that there's a big push between, you know, the traditional capital expenditure and really focusing on operating expenditures year to year. And, and cloud is a great way to transition yourself from a more capital expenditure view to that operating model. I mean, you know, some people put access control systems in and then don't upgrade them for 12 years. And then suddenly at the end of the 12 year, it's broken. And it's a huge major expenditure to update it again. The great thing about the cloud that you and I both know is, number one, you're always getting a real good sense of what's working, what's not, because you just get so many more analytics in the cloud. But the second thing is your software updates are handled. All those types of things are just on an annual basis. And it's really easy for you to look, you know, what my next three to five year expenditure is going to be exclusive of growth, which is always a good thing. But what my expenditure is going to be the next three to five years in terms of, you know, I need to support this active control system and keep it up to date. What is that going to look like? Predictable, steady, no, you know, no fluctuations like like what you just described. Everyone, you're always on the latest version of whatever products or set of products. That's another thing with the cloud is the, you know, the robust APIs and connectors that we have. So, you know, when you talk about Sherry and Brevo, you know, you know, it's predictable and it's there. Both of our companies will maintain our APIs, our respective APIs, so that that system um, you know, continues to work. And cloud companies and subscription-based companies are constantly motivated every day, um, you know, to 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 make their customers, you know, delighted with the product, you know, so that there there won't be any issues or anything like that. Whereas that if you just deploy something where in five years or whatever time frame you're talking about, it's out of date or it's broken or, you know, you can't predict that. You can't see that from an expense perspective, Um or, you know, or anything. And, and I, I certainly agree with your point about, you know, shifting from, from capital expense to operating expense. Again, there's that predictability and um, it just, the bumps aren't there. So you're, you're, you're updating automatically, you're growing automatically as, uh, as the cloud-based product grow and adjust to the marketplace. Well, you know, one thing you said that, that actually is very interesting. So I was reading an article by, by BCG the other day, and it specifically talked about the cloud as a function of the business ecosystem. So when you're talking about all these different APIs, all these different connections, it, it's not to add complexity to the system. It's about containing a you know consistent experience when you're talking about five different offices, potentially in five different countries. You know, when each person is moving between them, you can make it feel really consistent and very reliable at each one. And, and I think you're absolutely correct that, you know, APIs in particular, APIs in the cloud, we're not worried about, oh my goodness, what does my internet connection look like to that site? You know, is it how reliable is it? So when I click that, you know, update database button, is it actually going to push down or is it going to give me an error? Is that error going to be accurate? I mean, you're absolutely correct. When you talk about the cloud and the reliability of cloud to cloud and creation of that business ecosystem, it is at the moment, at least unmatched. And I don't think on-prem is ever going to surpass it. Completely agree. Consistency of experience, consistency of service. You don't have to worry about one server operating at a certain level and another operating at another level. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a little, you know, bit with network connectivity, but, but not really. And, and I agree consistency of experience and it's very, I agree. It's very difficult to replicate that. Um, and it's much more onerous to, to replicate that with, uh, with on-premise products, I think. So, well, you know, I, I know I told you the story, but I'll, I'll tell it on the webinar now as well. You know, you mentioned one server and I told you the story about a time when, boy, did I wish I had a, a cloud solution. I had a winter storm come through. I live in Boston, so we get a lot of snow, we get a lot of ice, and it had gone through and destroyed all sorts of power, all sorts of internet connectivity, which is all well and good. These things happen. But the problem was is all of a sudden we're going to try to pay people, and the way our payment system was set up at the time to you know, send employees their checks, even through direct deposit, required an actual software running on site on a physical server. And we, we found someone who had a generator, borrowed it from them, put it on the back of the truck, had a long extension cord running into the building, brought in a wireless router so we could actually, I mean, not not like a wireless in your house, like a cellular-based router to give that server internet connectivity. 
we had some poor person sitting in a dark room <laughs> typing away on her laptop to actually get people paid on it. Now, not long after that, not coincidentally, we did move to the cloud, but you want to talk about something that should give board of directors a concern is not paying all of your employees on time. That's a really good way to uh, make some people really not happy. So when we're talking about cloud, I mean, we're, we're saying it different ways, but really you can wrap a lot of it up in, in the risk profile and the risk reduction that you get with cloud. Completely agree. And that's, I, I love, I love the story that you're telling there because it's just, it's, it's um, you know, it's just one example of, so many mission critical things, but I mean, it's a, it's a great example. I, I couldn't agree yeah. more from a board perspective. You got to pay your employees. It, seems but, ridiculous. <laughs> it is, but certainly, you know, in what we're doing here um, together, physical access control and, you know, and, and, and interacting with spaces and all that kind of thing. I read something recently that said that they, um, that there is a belief that there's a trend that the legal liability for board, for folks on the board and for C-level executives for physical injuries and things like that that can happen is, is definitely going to go up in the years ahead. And you want to, you know, you just, again, want to be focused on that reliability and that consistent level uh, level of service uh, from the product. So, Yeah. I mean, something about that BCG article that I think ties with, with the McKinsey article well is, is the focus on innovation. Yep. And, you know, it, it was some really drastic numbers. So I'll, I'll read them off to you over here. It was, According to McKinsey, so by pushing to the cloud, organizations found that they were 90% faster, 95% easier innovation, 90% reduced risk. And one that you and I actually both think is low is only a 15% increase in scalability. I mean, that's probably very much because of our physical security background, but certainly all those numbers are incredible. And even the lowest one, which is scalability, I think you and I both think should be a lot higher. Because when you're thinking about how to deploy an access control system and a solution across 15 locations to try to get a physical server on site and set up each time or to get individual control boards running on a private either VPN or something similar to that. So they all talk to the same server at the same time. I mean, the numbers are drastic regardless of McKinsey. I mean, 95% easier innovation. I mean, what, what do you think about that, Jonathan? Completely. Yeah. Appreciate that, Kevin, and completely agree. So, I mean, I'll take it one by one. So the 90% speed and agility, we can certainly speak to that. You know, we're obviously deploying, you know, there's a lot of cloud companies out there. We're deploying hardware in conjunction with the cloud. As an example for us, we had a, you know, a, a thousand site project that we deployed, you know, one controller, one space in each of a thousand sites across the United States. And our, our partner was able to do that in under 60 days, which would be very, you know, to, to put it mildly. Uh, <laughs> every single site because we're putting one device and it's just connecting straight up to the host. So the speed is there. Everything is plug and play. You just deploy and continue to move. You can do it very, very quickly because again, as we were talking about that before, it's that consistency. We're not, we don't have one thing over here, one thing over here, and we're worried about how each one is performing. You're just connecting the hardware. And all that is, is a conduit between the host and the actual physical reaction, which is opening the door or not. Um, so we have that from a speed perspective. The innovation is something that I personally love to talk about because, you know, something that I work on, as I mentioned earlier in the session, is relationships like this, is partnerships where we have, you know, we love to work with companies like Sherry, where, you know, you're we're innovating in what we do. You know, we're all doing lots of things. We're innovating in access control and you all are, are you know, integrating in facility management in the way that you do it with the white label products and the connection of different systems and all that kind of thing. And it makes our product better by working with you. It allows us to innovate by innovating or, or taking a part of your innovation. And hopefully the, you know, I, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but hopefully cool. the reverse is true and that your, you know, your product is made better by ours. And in combination, we can go out and, you know, we have some potential deployments we're working on together where you guys take our system and add on other abilities and things that your system offers that we wouldn't be able to do on our own and vice versa. And taken together, that allows us to really easily innovate together in a way that we would just not be able to do without the easy connections we have and the strong APIs and, and all of that. The scalability, I completely agree. So we view ourselves, uh, we like to think of ourselves as infinitely scalable. That's obviously a very big word, but uh, you know, we are uh, we do work with AWS and AWS is just continuing to grow and grow and grow. And um, again, we use we, AWS as well. Exactly. So we're not we're not worried about that computing power. When we go and deploy, you know, these very large jobs, 
it's just, it's not a concern to us. And I totally agree that the number is low. And then the reduced risk, you know, that last number you gave the 90%. So, you know, we have been fighting for a long time. And I think, you know, that CIA example is one that I like to give, you know, there's a conception out there that an on-premise device or is, is less risky, or there's less risk inherent to that device because you can actually see it in front of you. But that's, that's that we don't believe that that holds water because just because you can see it doesn't mean you can control it. We actually feel the reverse is true, that every on-premise device is actually a vulnerability point or an attack surface. You know, the example we like to give is the target hack where there were, um, you know, there was a connected HVAC device and that they were, um, you know, they were hacked into by that HVAC device and the hackers were able to steal tens of millions of financial records. That's just, again, one example of one device. We've been in meetings where we'll talk to folks, security teams. I've actually seen it where we will say, you know, who's the last one? Just as part of a friendly conversation, who's the person who put that last patch on that device in that location? And people, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever. The point is, when you're on a cloud-based system, you don't have to know because it's being yeah. all taken care of for you. So those elements that you talked about, um, and particularly, you know, the scalability of trying to scale up, you know, additional redundancy, whatever it is, in addi- you know, to try to scale and to reduce risk um, as a customer or uh, as a partner, you don't have to worry about that because the cloud provider in whatever they're providing, whether it's security or otherwise, um, is doing that. And that's what that's what they offer. No, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I, I've met with a client and even, you know, clients who really have a focus on cybersecurity and, and believe in it. And they say, OK, you know, which server is, is running your access control system? And they'll be like, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, I connect to it on, on that workstation. And the workstation's running like Windows XP or something like that. You know, it, it's not, I'm not talking about a one-off thing. And I'm not talking about 20 years ago either. I mean, this would be something that wouldn't surprise me if I met with a client tomorrow. They point to the access control system. And it turns out it is, you know, five, six revisions behind on the software. And the operating system is, is even maybe even worse hasn't been updated almost ever. They, you know, you click the button in the lower left-hand corner, it shows like updates, updates, updates. They're like, oh, we didn't know we needed to like update it. We thought they kind of, you know, handled that when the security people came in to like do updates. And you just see, number one, security, physical security falls into a hole between facilities, if there's a physical security team, and then IT staff where none of them really want to be the sole ones responsible for managing it. And you get that situation where the cloud solves so much of that. So, um, you know my background as an integrator and a thousand site deployment. Um, if you weren't using the cloud, yes, this is technically feasible, but I would love to see someone go to a client and try to get a thousand static IP addresses or something like that. It, it, it is almost impossible to do that type of scale with anything else but the cloud, at least in any sort of reasonable time frame. I mean, once again, yes, you can technically do this with VPN. Yes, you can technically do it with static IP addresses, but to try to get those things set up, deployed reliably and quickly, it, it, the cloud is so much faster, so much faster. It, it's almost incredible. I mean, that's what makes us believe that the McKinsey numbers are real. I mean, they're, they're drastic, but in both of our experiences, we can certainly think of instances where something that would have been impossible is it, suddenly very possible for the cloud. I mean, think about COVID, right? I mean, we were talking about, you know, Zoom and Teams and stuff like that before. Think of all the updates we've gone through with Zoom and Teams, where if those weren't cloud platforms, if I have to connect to my, you know, old school VPN on site to try to dial out on, no offense to WebEx, but I think I used to have to be on like a specific network to connect to WebEx a long time ago and stuff like that. It would have never been possible for companies to continue to function when COVID happened. And, and now, I mean, you have a web call and it's not even a difficult thing. I mean, we were able to manage having four different softwares. Because although the interfaces may be different, the cloud makes it real easy. You click one button and you join the meeting, and then I just have to figure out how to unmute myself. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of big numbers. We're, we're talking about a lot of real growth. I mean, but one thing we haven't talked about really is that there is an investment required to kind of move the cloud and the change management associated with it. I mean, the, the number from McKinsey, I think, was two years return on investment, though. I mean, so when you think about moving to Brevo versus, I don't want to name a name, but like some, some very old, you know, RS45 based access control system, no, there's a definite initial cost. Same way if you're moving from, you know, a logbook on a desk to a visitor management platform that Jerry offers, yep. there's a cost in it. But 
you know, McKinsey really focused not just on the expenditure associated with our solution, but really the change management and the efficiencies you can gain out of it as well. I mean, do you see that with Brevo as well when you, you know, have customers transition from legacy on-prem? Absolutely. Um, so you, you're you're correct and they're correct. There's obviously in, you know, two years and it takes to go up and make up for it. But once you have made up for it, there's there's so much there, so much advantage that you're getting. I mean, again, you know, both in terms of the cost that we talked about, the unpredictable costs of managing on-premise infrastructure to the, you know, the personnel that are required to go and manage all of those things, whether it be the redundancy and everything. So there's just so much there. We have a full um, total cost of ownership case study, um, you know, that goes into it. But it, it, there's so many things. I mean, we have a statistic on IT that I think 50% of IT managers believe that, you know, today in today's competitive market, that maintaining personnel enough to maintain all these systems is one of the biggest obstacles that they face. So it's these costs that you have, you know, in terms of the non-predictable stuff, but it's also these things um, that you can't exactly quantify, but the, you know, the difficulty of losing people and trying to find people and all that, when you can make this, you know, so much easier, um, you know, which is why another thing from our CEO, he likes one of the nuggets that he says is there's just no logical reason to believe that the access control server is going to be the last server standing in the server closet. There's just no, you know, there's no reason to believe that because this stuff applies. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Um, and then the other one, I'll the other one I'll throw at you that you know another one that I uh, that I like from a show that I saw once before is an, an enterprise customer who's going to move to us. He said, I should have listened to you guys eight years ago. Should have listened to you five years ago. Should have listened to you two years ago. And I'm going to listen to you now because yes, it is the cost that you're saying there is. You have to have that initial investment. But then these things that happen every two years, three years, whatever it is, um, that have both quantifiable costs and also intangibles, you know, like keeping people and just some of the demands that are required with all this, I think really make the cloud uh, worth it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's certainly parallel to what both of us do. But, you know, I, I think back to when COVID happened and people were very concerned about the occupancy of their building. And people are trying to figure out how to do different analytics on cameras and cameras that were already in the cloud and were using various cloud analytics. All they had to do, I mean, I make it sound easy, right? I'm not a developer, but all they had to do was write, you know, a slightly different algorithm associated with people walking past the line. And suddenly that cloud-based solution had occupancy quantity overnight where you could see in real time how many users were in the building and it was tracking through a camera. Whereas if you were an on-prem solution, you know, oh boy, does that server have enough horsepower? Is the server up to date? I mean, just in terms of your ability to to add efficiencies and, and add scope, the cloud just makes it so much easier. I mean, Sherry and Abrivo application is pretty much just letting us know that you'd like to add those types of feature sets. Whereas if you're thinking about compared to a legacy access control system, there's just so many more questions I have to have. Mm -hmm. And I think that really, you know, is kind of endemic of, of the total solution that we're talking about is moving the cloud is not just about, you know, physical security, not just about operating expenses, but really, it's changing kind of the whole way your organization is set up, and that's why it should be attracted to the C-suite. I mean, back in the McKinsey article, they really talked about going from siloed to cross-functional. And I think a big part of going from siloed to cross-functional is that scalability and that flexibility in particular to add and move different features so that when a different department comes to a facility and says, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z, assuming that those are reasonable things that they want to request, yeah. facilities can say, absolutely, you know, this is the time frame. I don't need to add anything to it. Let me talk to, you know, Brevo to get that feature added on our solution. Let me get that admin added in real quick. And they're off and running. And I think that type of collaboration as opposed to where everything is going up to silos. And then it's a budget fight each time. They want a feature, it's now a budget fight. And I, I think that's what the cloud can really help solve at a, at a high level for, you know, a board of directors or a C-suite team. Absolutely. So we're coming up here on time. And uh, I don't... I'll put it out there if there are any questions. Um, I haven't seen any in the chat, so I'll give it a minute, but I'll assume we're probably good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jonathan. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you for yours. Agreed. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.